feet first. I was someone who was somewhat forced to play football. Um, you know, uh, I, I can remember draft day like it was yesterday. My family and I were sitting around and we're, we're watching the draft and the phone rings and it's Bill Parcells. Uh, you know, I answer the phone, I say hello, and Parcells says, uh, Curtis, we want to know if you're interested in being a New England Patriot. And I said, um, well, y yes, yes, sir. Uh, and we hang up the phone. As soon as we hang up the phone, I turn around to everyone and I say, oh my gosh, I do not want to play football. No, you laughing, but this is, this is real, this is the truth. You know, I turn around and say, I, I don't want to play football. I don't even know that I like football enough to try to make a career out of it. And uh, my pastor at the time was a guy by the name of Leroy Joseph. And I'm so glad he was there to talk some sense into it. Uh, so he says, Curtis, look at it this way, man. He said, um, maybe football is just something that God's giving you to do all those wonderful things that you say you want to do for other people. And I tell you, it's like a light bulb came on in my head. That became my connection with football. And I don't know if he would have said that to me if football would have got out of me. What it got out of me, I definitely wouldn't be standing here. You know, and, and, and ever since he said that, I knew that the only way I was going to be successful at this game called football was if I played for a purpose that was bigger than the game itself because I knew that the love for the game just wasn't in my heart. Uh, but, but, but let me say this. This weekend, and I, and I tell you this, and this is God's honest truth. I came up here, I had a chance to spend time with the older guys, the guys who have been inducted. I've got, I had a chance to listen to their experience. On Friday morning, Something that rubbed off on me, and, and literally yesterday, I really felt like it was my first day as a fan of the game of football. You know, uh, my, uh, you know, I had a father who, I mean, I love him dearly, and he's passed and gone on, and I mean, he was my God before he died, but. When I was five years old, I remember watching him torture my mother. I mean, literally. And listen, I, I don't necessarily have notes, so I'm going to kind of bear my soul and just bear with me. But, uh, you know, I, I remember him watching watching him torture you, Mom. He had, he had my mother locked in the bathroom, had her sitting on the edge of the tub, and he turned on all the hot water and stopped the tub up so that the hot water would eventually flow on her legs. And he dared her to move. And as the hot water flowed up and started going on her legs and going on her feet, and she would just flinch a little bit, he would rush into the bathroom, take her here, and burn it with a lighter. And, you know, he'd come back out, watch her some more. She'd move again. He'd go in there with a cigarette and put cigarette burns all over her legs, which she still bears to this day. And, you know, I've seen him... Uh, you know, beat her up like she was a man. I've seen him throw her down the steps. I've, I've, I've witnessed this woman go to, uh, hey, they got, they got a bet on whether I'm a cry or not, so I'm holding in, all right? <laughs> but, uh, um, I, I, you know, I watched my mother, uh, get punched in the face, have a black eye, and then go to work with makeup on just to support our family. You know, uh, you know, I, 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 I've watched this. Uh, um, she did everything to raise me, and in hindsight, you know, when you're a kid and your mother's tough on you, you don't necessarily understand why. You know, I used to think it was because my dad was so tough on her that it would just naturally make her tough on me. You know, I heard the saying one time that says, hurt people hurt people. And my mother was dealing with so much hurt and pain. And <clears throat> I know that she had to um, take some of that out. 
uh, somewhere. And now, I, you know, Mom, I'm so grateful that I was there for you to even take some of that pain out on. Because you deserve it. You know, um, by the time I was five, my, my, my dad was gone. And um, my mother, because we couldn't afford it, you know, she would work two and three jobs. She tied a shoestring around my neck with a key and taught me how to come in the house. I come home from kindergarten and first grade almost for two years and stay in the house by myself till like 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. And my mother said it just broke her heart every single day. Walking up those steps, you know, we lived in sort of a, a low-income housing project type environment. And I would always be sitting in that front window because I was scared. I was so petrified of being in the house by myself. Especially, I didn't even watch Scooby-Doo. You know, I was, I was that scared. I didn't know the ghosts on Scooby-Doo scared the heck out of me. Beat burst.